Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining. My name is Eric, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create dynamic fonts. If you wanna follow along, the simplest way would be to just add a label node somewhere in one of your projects, and you'll be able to do everything we do in this video. What I'm using is actually the project from my last video on the Godot simple save system. I've just removed my custom fonts from that video. I'll put a link in the description to the GitHub repository with that project, or you can check out that video and walk through those steps to build out this project with me. So to get started with dynamic fonts, we need really only one thing. We need a file that contains font data, and that's called a TTF file. That's the file format. So we're gonna hop over to Google, and we're gonna go to fonts.google.com. Google provides all these fonts that are free for download that you'll be able to use in your projects. There's a lot of places on the internet where you can get TTF files or font data in general. So many places. I don't even know all the places. This is usually where I go. It's pretty simple. It's intuitive. They've got a lot of great fonts. This is actually the one we're going to grab right here. Guji or Juji. I, I'm not really sure. If you want to pick your own font, you can actually edit the text just to see what different values will look like, however you want to do it. Whatever you're looking for, you can sort by category. We're going to hit the plus button. we got to come down here. I don't really understand this download structure, but we come down here. It's almost like we're building out a shopping cart, I guess. Here's the download button. Once it's downloaded inside that zip file, for Guji, I think there's only one TTF file because in most fonts, there will be a TTF file for each type of font, so regular, bold, italics. Just grab the guji.ttf and then place it somewhere in your project structure. The way that I've set it up, I've got a fonts folder and I've put my guji-regular.ttf in there. So now it's available inside the project and I can use it to create a dynamic font. To create a dynamic font, I'm gonna go to any one of my label nodes so I've got this label here. You can barely see it just because of how small it is, and it'll be a lot bigger in a second. But it's set to zero right now. But it just looks terrible because it's completely out of the gate. There's nothing custom about it. So we're going to go to Custom Fonts down here. If you scroll down on the label node, scroll down to Custom Fonts. I guess we can check it. We're going to hit Empty, New Dynamic Font. Click that. Now this is actually new for me in Godot 3.1, but we've got everything right here in a dropdown. So the two things that we're going to be looking at here are settings and then font. Underneath the font dropdown is where we're going to add the font data, and that's going to be the TTF file that we've added to our project. So we're going to hit this, we're going to hit load, we're going to go to our fonts folder, guji-regular, open, and it's in there. So it actually shows you visually that it's in there. You can barely tell that the zero has changed, but it has. We're going to come back up to size. We're going to bump this up to 100. Now that looks pretty good, in my opinion. It looks a lot better than the, than the standard. And that's really it. Now when we have the dynamic font data, or we have the dynamic font for this node, you can change the font, you can change the outline size, outline color, you can use a filter to apply kind of an anti-alias to the font. I'll zoom in a little bit and show you that. So if we hit filter, it basically blurs it. It's like an anti-aliasing effect. I'm going to leave that off. I recommend that you keep your size generally to a multiple of two just because I think that usually works better. It depends on the font. You'll have to play around with that for different use cases. So we have this dynamic font, but what we want to do here is we want to right click on it. What you could do is create a new dynamic font for every node, but that seems kind of like a waste of time when we're able to save this dynamic font here. So I'm gonna hit save. I right clicked on the font, I hit save. We're gonna name this Guji Custom, or maybe I, I would actually name it something like Guji 100, just so we know how large it is, because you may have different nodes with different font sizes that all use the same font data. So if size is one of the primary differences, we want to distinguish what that is. So we're going to say Guji 100. 
save. So now we've got this guji100.tres file, and that's our dynamic font. If you want to change the color of the node, that's outside of the dynamic font. We can go here and we can change the color however we want. We're going to leave it the way that it was. Uh, so we've saved. We've saved the Guji 100. Dot tres. I really hope I'm saying that right because I, I hate saying Guji over and over. We've got it saved. We're going to go to these other labels. Now, ideally, we would have these UI nodes inherited from the same kind of parent that's providing this dynamic font along with them so we wouldn't have to. Oops, I did that wrong. So I clicked on new dynamic font by accident. We're going to clear it, I think. Uncheck it. Check it. We're going to hit this. Instead of new dynamic font, we're just going to hit load. We're going to go back into fonts. Guji100.tres is already there. Open. And then our node automatically adopts those, those principles that we set for the zero. So I think that looks pretty good. And we're just going to run through here and do that for all of these. Load. Open. This is one of the more boring aspects of this process. Save and then load. I say it's boring. It's actually kind of exciting because you get to see your project progressively or iteratively get better right in front of you. Okay, so that's it. We, we created a dynamic font. We saved the dynamic font and we've applied the dynamic font to all of our UI. We're going to run the project just so you can see it. Save it at 7, load it back to 7. And that's the result of the previous video. But there you go. I think that's really all you need. Hopefully that helps people understand a little bit more about dynamic fonts. If you learned something or just enjoyed the video, remember to hit subscribe. Leave me a comment letting me know what you liked or what you want to see in the future. But for now, that's all I've got. Thanks for watching.